Hey guys, last time we left off, we uh, rerouted the power to Edgewater. I know. How absolutely horrifying of us. But a man's gonna do what a man's gonna do. Let's head to the botanical lab. And see if we can convince people to go to Edgewater. If we don't get shot on sight, that is. I don't think that's gonna happen now. And if it does, I think I'm better equipped than them. Hello. Man, this place turned dark real quick. Everybody keeps staring at me. It's not my fault the power's dead. Today's your lucky day, Thomas. I got one of the data no pads. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? Really? Part one. Look at that. Building a computing machine out of Spectrum Potatoes, a primer. I'm just glad it survived all these years. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart. Oh, almost forgot your payment. Nice. I got more of you. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Well, duh, it's the last part. Elusive part three. Someone stashed it away inside a geothermal plant. The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Ms. Parvati, I swear, I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. Hey, I should go, man. Okay, well. Oh. Uh oh. That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. Oh, calm down. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil. And my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private. Away from the eyes of my flock. So they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me. Why did you do it? Hmm. Reed needs his people back. And also, I don't know your explanation. You know what? You're right. The Eternal made you a loathsome reptile, and it is not in my power to change the color of your scales. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. Hmm. What happened to you, Adelaide? All this anger had to come from somewhere. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. <sighs> I'll be willing to deal with Reed for you. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Reed isn't just going to leave his post. I'll need some help convincing him. Tell him what I have already told you. 
that I know the secret to bringing life back to the soil. The secret is human corpses. I've been grinding them up in my fertilizer for years. Marauder, worker, don't matter much to me. The human body is rich with nutrients. Mm-hmm. What happens when you run out of corpses? Edgewater Cemetery's got corpses aplenty. Enough for a generation's worth of crops. Hmm. Enough talk. How about you? Alright, well, let's talk to him. Sorry. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what to do, is all. Uh, you won't survive without power. It's time to go back to Edgewater. I've been thinking about going back. I'm not much used to anybody here. I get sick thinking about working at the cannery. I can't do that again. Hmm. So don't work at the cannery. You want to be an engineer. You know something? I think you're right. The town could use another engineer, and I'm on my way to becoming one. I could do a lot of good in Edgewater. Maybe even keep a garage of my own with a little workbench and my very own toolbox. It's just... Adeline's never gonna forgive me. Not in a hundred years. I go crawling back to my old life in Edgewater and... I'm as good as dead to her. Oh, calm down. Stay put. I'm gonna try to talk Reed into stepping down. You know where to find me. I should go. I don't know what you did to talk some sense into Zoe, but I appreciate it. There's nothing left for you here. Time to get back the to Edgewater. The matter's been weighing on me. Zoe came back, but I couldn't keep her from slipping out in the first place. Who's to say I could keep marauders from slipping in? I don't see us lasting more than a couple of weeks out here. I'm loath to admit it. We're gonna have to make our peace with Thompson and hope he takes us back. Listen, we go back to Reed, hat in hand, begging for our old jobs back. Well, Adelaide's not gonna forgive us. She never talked to us again. Don't don't do anything hasty. Don't be hasty. Uh, I'm going to try to talk Reed into stepping sure. down. Sure, suit yourself. I'll be here. I think we're gonna quick travel to the ship. First day. All right. Time for manual save. Let's get back out there. Speaking of back out there, I think we didn't go over here yet. So let's go check that out. Oh, by the way, we're no longer in the... Uh, what should we call it? And the plant, so what the fuck just happened? Wait, what? I was pretty sure I had like another gun just with me right now. Oh well, whatever. Did I drop it or something? I'm pretty sure that was not the gun I disintegrated into nothingness, but whatever. Old wreckage. I don't really care about the gun we had anyway. I mean, our gear is more than powerful enough.
Holy. That's a lot of damage. These guys got absolutely destroyed, man. Nothing. I feel it rather renoed. Primal brain. Okay, well, that's that. Pretty much sure we explored everything there is to explore here. Maybe this gulch. Yeah, maybe we missed that. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go to... Alright, so here's the plan. What I'm gonna do is gonna go to town, then we'll make our way back to the North Gulch and just check around if we can't do anything around here. How's that sound? Hopefully we can talk Reed into leaving. That'd be pretty good. Oops. Dodge backwards. Guns loaded. Take out the shotgun in case Reach says anything funny I don't like. Greetings. This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? Hmm. I spoke to Adelaide, but she won't be coming back as long as you're here. Then we are at an impasse. Stewardship over this town has been entrusted to me by Spacer's choice. I am not perfect. I have made my share of mistakes. But I have done my best for this town. Hmm. The change of leadership might need what might be what this town needs. I am a spacer's choice man. My father was a spacer's choice man. Edgewater may not look like much to some buttoned up freelancer, but it is my home. Well, I tried. <laughs> Adelaide's people aren't getting sick with the plague. I don't believe you. Plague's a reality of life. Best treatment is a good work ethic. No. Have you people ever eaten an actual vegetable? The very notion is just grotesque. A raw vegetable? Why don't you just ask me to go chew the bark off of a tree? We are a Spacer's Choice Saltuna cannery. We eat Saltuna here, and only Saltuna. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's food making you sick. You need Adelaide's garden. I don't understand. You say Adelaide's growing her own food, but that should not be possible. The soil's gone sour. Company said as much. Our own botanists couldn't grow decent crops for us, so the company got rid of them and shut down the greenhouse. 
Yeah. Adelaide's found a way to grow food. She'll come back if she stepped down, man. You will excuse me for being skeptical. How exactly is Adelaide growing crops in barren soil? Hmm. Well, look, Reed. All I know is that involves some really complicated math, and it works. If Adelaide's found a way to feed her people and cure the plague, then she deserves this office more than I do. I won't stand in her way. My life here is ended. Give me a little time to settle my affairs. I'm sure Adelaide will be glad to see the back of me. What are your plans? A couple months ago, I might have put in for a transfer. It's a big colony. Spacer's Choice has other towns. Now, I couldn't show my face in any of them. This can't be easy for you. I have always tried to do right by my town. It has never been easy. You don't have to do this, you know. I do. Adelaide's found a cure for the plague. And she knows how to tend to crop. She's what this town needs. Take care. Okay. Let's get the fuck out of here, then. Looks like we don't need this gun anymore. I'm getting thirsty. Right, well, let's uh, let's go talk to Adelaide, tell her what's up. Whew, my PC is blowing. What the fuck is that? Oh. Just some random enemies. Nothing to be worried about. The fuck? Really now? Don't mess with us. Let's not engage in that fight. Not particularly interested in causing more trouble. Whatever. Snake and live. here yeah we might be able to do something going around back who knows all right Adelaide I got some news for you look at that the snakes come back I'll talk to Regan, Reed and leave and come back to Edgewater. I never thought I'd see the day that Reed Thompson abandoned his post. Suppose we all have a breaking point. Suppose it's time our flock made our way back to Edgewater. We must tend to what remains of the town and carry on with our lives as best we may. You're vexing to me, you know? Injuring us with one hand, helping us with the other. Here. I'm giving you something to leave us be. It's a ransom, you understand, not a reward. Hmm, Edgewater's been, uh, is better off with, uh, you running the place. You're telling me you did all this just to put me in charge of Edgewater? Stranger, you are some kind of twisted. I might turn that old cannery into a garden. Got ourselves a whole cemetery bursting with bodies. I need some time to gather my personals. Long walk back to Edgewater. 
Not a considerable burden to carry. Take care. I'll be taking this. Uh oh, we got a we got a bug, boys. Let's see if I can't fix it. I know. I'm. Don't see why. Something I can help. Where is some? Not. <laughs> okay. Uh oh, this uh this bug doesn't. Oh, I'm on fire. I don't like the look of this bug. Let's see, can't I find a, a container or something? Everything's been sealed up. Okay, we fixed it. Right, that's uh. Are those mines? No. I knew there were mines here, but... Okay, let's see. Oh, we definitely not doing anything about that. No, sir. Well, I think it's uh, about time we head back to the ship. Let's see. Dive robot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to turn in that quest. So let's go to ship. And, uh, don't I have anything to run faster, by the way? Let's see if Rita's still there after this. All right, we're back. Let's see if uh, Reed is still in uh, in office when we come back. Never seen the veil lit up like this before. You mentioned the logic model. Found one in a geothermal plant. Bang up work, soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, well, that reminds me. Gotta look into getting us a uniform. So this is it, then. The key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. So here's a couple of bits for your trouble, and a little something to remember me by. Take care, man. I'd like to buy some of this shit from you. I'll definitely buy that water off here. Pretty good. Damn straight up boy, all that crap. Grenade launcher, damn. Some more water stuff. We can always use the water. Alright. Oh, right, right, right. We were gonna talk to, uh, or see if Reed is still in office.
And then I want to think about when I start leveling up, I actually want to start thinking about uh, getting more leadership because we can't do any special attacks with our companions, yet, so they're effectively useless right now. Which I don't like. That was a good thing you did, Captain. Helping to bring the deserters and Edgewater folks back together. I hope you rest well on that. I will. Reed, my old friend, you're still here. I already told you I'm leaving. Alright, see ya. Yes, he is. Can I just teleport to my uh, space thing? Yeah, I can. Fuck, that's awesome. Okay. Well, let's do it. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but every time I think of going back, I get this sinking feeling. Hmm. <laughs> I understand not wanting to go back. I didn't seem happy in Edgewater. Oh, well, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. I wasn't happy. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Sure. I'm not interested. See ya. Well... I'd be glad to have you along. Pick a cab and it's yours. Yes! I mean, uh, thanks. You won't regret this, ma'am. Captain. I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. <laughs> Something you need? No, nope. we'll talk later. Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named The Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. As always, I am at your disposal. Anything you'd like to discuss? Uh, I'd like to know something about those I'm flying with. What's your story? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Hmm. Uh, that's what my parents called it. <laughs> I grew up in a pit of a town, much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. Hmm, not religious? On the contrary. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith. A faith that brought joy to them, regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. But weren't they proud when you became a victor, vicar, at least? They thought I was fighting the plan. Should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige. But that was not me. This plan of yours, uh, if you can't help but follow the plan, then everything you do is part of it, right? The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. Hmm. Seems quite trusting of you to just sign on without knowing anything about me. 
I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. Makes sense. What about you? What's your story? <laughs> I was a colonist on the Hope. A scientist, a scientist named Wells saved me. And how did he do that? Well, he stole my body from the Hope at the edge of the colony and told me out. Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? Well, I'm helping him recover more of the chemicals he needs to save the rest of the colonists. That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Mm. It's because it's the right thing to do. A commendable attitude. Tell me again about the book we picked up in French. Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. All right. Any ideas where we can find someone who f speaks French in this colony? I've been thinking on that. There's a former associate uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra 2 some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. Hmm. Seriously, there's only one guy in the whole colony who can translate French. The only one I'm aware of. I suppose we could always just ask random passers-by if they are fluent in it. Point taken. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. Hmm. How is it that a simple vicar happens to be such a highly skilled hacker? Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time oh, to develop right, we certain... heard all this. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmate. Alright. How will a crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. Sounds good. Let's go. Thank you, Captain. Alright. You know what, let's just Captain, talk it out. I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? I have a power regulator. Do you know how to install a power regulator? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you. Across the cargo bay, up the ladders. I'll be back. Oops. Alright. Look at this shit. I bet it's just plopping in the thing. Engineering! Oh, got it. <laughs> it really was like that. Oh god, that's funny. Can we open the cool quarters now? Damn it. Wait, actually, what is that? Captain's quarters, yeah, you see? Alright, let's talk to her. What can I do for you, Captain? I've installed the power regulator. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Well, let's get out of here. What a piece of junk. Look, kid, she may not look like my... Yeah, whatever. 
The unreliable takes flight. I received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Sure. Hit him up. I've been waiting to hear from him. Ah, there you are. Hail and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. <laughs> uh, well, I've been feeling a little lightheaded. Also, I can slow down time. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Hmm. Why do I need a nav key to land on a planet? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraform badly and almost completely lawless you'll love it <laughs> captains don't fly their own ships you see your navigation terminal handles the uh, you know navigation think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions the board's been confiscating nav keys for stellar bay so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition hence miss gladys called kelly ah can I land somewhere outside the Stellar Beto? In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And, in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Kelly. Okay. How do I know I can trust her? Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Alright. I'll go have a word with Gladys. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the captain's quarters. Cool. Wanna explain what a Holographic Shroud is, though? Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Hmm. You mentioned this thing has limitations. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. All right. We'll put it good to use. Thanks. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Got it.
we leveled up. And you know what? I am going to start to pumping points into inspiration and leadership. Companion abilities. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Perks. So, what do we want to get here? Time dilation recharge rate seems pretty good. And then the last thing we'll be getting, I think, is uh, is still up for grabs. It might be actually Traveler. <laughs> you taught them an important le lesson. Never dream. Holographic Shroud projects a disguise on you and your companions that gives you access to the restricted areas, provided you have the correct ID card rules for that area. Off limits to unaddressed personnel attacked on sight. Holy fuck, that's a lot of XP. Ooh, we finally have a bin. Shock stick. Sure, we'll keep that. I might give that to someone, so let's keep that for now. Let's, uh... Store. About a good ten of those. Store those. Store about ten of those. Mind attributes. Might be good. Store about ten of those. So all of these. Store about 10 waters, I guess. And then we'll just, you know, fuck it. YOLO, just get rid of some shit. I mean, we have enough shit on us as is. And then... Wow. That's a lot of stuff. Alright, you know what? What the? Okay, sentry saber. Take those off your hands. Okay, well, I think we've done enough for this episode, so let's... Uh, you know, let's just go, go sleep. Sleep for some hours, and we'll call it here after this long, long episode. Eat some food while we're at it. Drink some water. Drink some more water. Eat some more food. Oops. There we go. That's better. Okay, and savor up. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then.